Okay, welcome. I'm Tim Titus, Chief Technical Officer of Pass Solutions. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show you a demo of TotalView and what it can end up doing to improve your network operation. So let me dive in here. So first thing is, is that this deploys very rapidly. This is actually a 90 megabyte download, not gigabyte, megabyte. So there's this big sign in our development lab saying no bloatware is built here. Um, we actually have the core service uses 16 DLLs. That's it. So what that should tell you is, is that this really isn't bloatware, but there's a reason for that. With 16 DLLs, we use very few external libraries, and that means that the product is more securely built because it's all our own code. Uh, I Personally, I got sick and tired of a lot of the solutions out there where, oh, there's 500 different DLLs, and if one goes bad, the whole thing falls like a house of cards. And I'm like, it's not how software should be built. Software should be built so that it works. So uh, very compact, very efficient, yet very powerful. So this will typically deploy on a virtual machine in your environment, but it can also be deployed in the cloud, really wherever you want to deploy it. What it's going to do is after it installs, it's going to scan the network and find all of your SNMP manageable switches, routers, gateways, firewalls, and automatically start picking up information from them. As it digs deep into each one of these devices, it's going to start finding problems. So here we can look and say, gee, there's a problem with the Syrah switch, and we have a red dot in front of it. Okay, let's go see what that is. We click into the interface, and we see, or click into the device, we see all the interfaces. So we see interface five here with a red dot, and we see 4% packet loss. Now, if I told you guys, hey, we found a switch port with packet loss, I think most of you would be saying, well, that's probably a printer. Maybe it's a photocopier. I really don't care about that. That's a low priority problem. On the other hand, if this is a trunk port to another switch, if there's a critical server here, if this is a VoIP handset, that could be a high priority problem. So really, depending upon what's plugged in here drives the criticality of the fix. So to help answer that question, we expose all of the CDP and LLDP information so we can show you what's connected upstream. We also have a fully integrated port mapper that shows you what's plugged in. Okay, so that interface has one MAC address, so it's not a trunk port. It's associating with the HQ voice VLAN, VLAN number 110. Okay, that's interesting. It's, uh, this is a Dell machine. Okay, I have the IP address, I have the DNS information. Oh, wait a minute. This is our voicemail recording server? Okay, if we have packet loss to that server, that's going to create uh, choppy sounding voicemails. So I'd say that's a high priority problem. Let's go see what the problem is now that we know what's affected. We click into the interface and we're presented with the utilization graph. Below that, we have the packet loss graph. And then below that, we have the plain English prescription. And here we're being told we have a cabling fault. Okay, if I'm a tier one tech, it's that fast and easy to say, I found a problem, I found out what's affected by the problem, and I know what the problem is, and I can solve it. Now, other monitoring products wouldn't even be aware of this problem, because again, they're not monitoring all of the interfaces. Users would just say, hey, yeah, choppy sounding voicemails, wish the network guys knew what was going on. In this case, because we're looking at every interface, we know that there are packets being dropped here, and we also know why. Now, even if another monitoring software package was monitoring this interface, they still wouldn't be aware of the problem. Here's why. If we click on view error counters, this is gonna show all 19 of the error counters that we're picking up. So other monitoring products, if they're configured to monitor an interface, they're only gonna look at inbound errors and outbound errors. And therefore they're gonna mislead you and say, hey, this interface is healthy, give you a nice healthy graph and say, hey, it's all good. The problem is this interface actually isn't very healthy at all. We've got a ton of FCS errors, some deferred transmissions, some outbound discards. And here's what all this means based upon the interface type and configuration is you have a cabling fault. So it does that for you so that you can have that junior level person fix the problem. Now, if you wanna learn more about the error counters, you can click into any one of these and we're gonna give you the official IEEE definition of the error. So here's, uh, for example, for SCS errors, here's the official IEEE, here's a more basic lay definition, and then here's all of the causes as to where that, can prom that problem can come from. The point here is you're not left stranded wondering, where do I go from here? How do I interpret this? Okay, 
So this is the depth we can go into on any interface in the infrastructure. Let's put this together and find out what happened between a pair of IP addresses. So let's say we have a user that said, hey, I was doing unified communications from their desktop and they're connecting to a, uh, connecting to a server. So what we can do is on the path tab, put in the IP address of their PC, put in the IP address of the server. And these can be any two IP addresses, phone to phone, PC to server, video conference unit to video conference unit. Okay, so what we see here is here's their PC. Looks like it's plugged into the Pino layer two switch and it's connected to interface seven. Over the past 24 hours, that connection is perfectly healthy, especially around noon when the user complained about the problem. Now, again, when we say an interface is perfectly healthy, it means perfectly healthy according to all 19 of those error counters. Okay, so we can see outbound, it's going out through interface 26, and it looks like there's some utilization around noon, uh, but there's no packet loss, and there's more bandwidth available, so that's actually a healthy interface. Okay, now we're going through the Seurat switch, inbound and outbound, that looks good. Uh-oh, outbound on the burgundy switch, going out interface number three, we look at that interface and say just before noon here, this interface was dropping 6% of the packets. I think we found a suspicious interface. At this point, we click into the interface, read the plain English prescription, and get the root cause of the problem solved. So we figure with all of the error counters checked on every one of these interfaces that were involved between these two endpoints at any point in time, it means any problem gets solved. Is there a way in the product to say, if I see any interface that is exhibiting, say, a condition like this, like 5%, whatever, put it on, you know, a dashboard or a hot sheet so that, you know, I'm not kind of looking for the information. It just draws my attention right to it. So, yes. So there's, there's an issues tab that it's going to put it all there with, and you can prioritize that. Um, generally, what people will do is say, just system-wide, start putting intelligent error alerting. Now, you might not want to say, gee, if we have more than 1% packet loss on any interface, send me an alert. You're going to be inundated. What we advise people to do is say, start at 10%. Set that bar and say, 10% packet loss on any interface. I want to know about that and start working on it. At that point, you start lowering the bar and say, okay, next month, we're going to drop this down to 8%. Next month, we'll drop it to 5%. Next month, we'll drop it down to 3%. And as you start getting your network tuned to be healthier and healthier, you're just going to get rid of packet loss and anything that passes that bar, you're now aware of. So as a follow-up, is there a way to say like these particular interfaces, maybe like tag them as this is, you know, my way in interface this is a firewall interface or this is a call center interface. I want to have different thresholds for different kind of profiles and then get alerting based on that. Yeah, yeah. So you can put them in a WAN group and say, hey, for anything that's in this WAN group, tighter, more stringent set of rules for this. Um, or you can say based on the office and say, hey, if it's the, <laughs> the headquarters environment where the CEOs all are, yeah, I want to know about packet loss at the 3% mark. But the factory, you know, there's spurious issues. You're just going to have issues. You don't want to be chasing every one of those. That might be an 8% packet loss environment. Other things we have for the NOC, we have a uh, NOC view that you can set up that will show live updates of links and devices. A lot of other companies, they'll have this set up where it's like, oh, every 60 seconds or maybe every two minutes. That's not enough. I played with those systems where every 60 seconds, and what would happen is you'd get a phone call saying, hey, did you realize the Texas site is offline? And you'd look and say, no, it's not offline as far as I'm aware. And then two seconds later, oh, it just updated. Yeah, it's offline. Let me work on it. That's embarrassing. With this being five seconds, that means if that site goes offline, you know about it. And so that first phone call that hits your phone, you can say, we're aware of the issue and we're working on it. That way, you're never having a user know more about your network than you do. We've automatically generated network diagrams. Uh, this is going to end up showing all of the subnets, all of your devices. Uh, you can download this to Visio. Uh, you can search for things. So if you say, gee, what's the purpose of the 51 subnet? You can just search for that. Oh, that's in the Austin network and that connects the round rock switches. Okay, I now know where that is and what it is. You drill into that? Not yet. <laughs> With our very next release, we're gonna have full drill downs into each one of these. So yes, we're getting there. 
Um, here's the gremlins tab that Tom talked about. So, <laughs> so if somebody says your network glitched uh, 15 minutes ago, what happened? And you're like, 15 minutes ago? I don't know what happened in time. Well, we do. You can drop this down to 15 minutes. It's going to show you all of the events that took place at that time. Interfaces that change status, devices that change status, interfaces or devices that had high packet loss or high utilization so that you can correlate and say, oh, okay, I see what occurred at that point that caused that issue. So is that like everything in the last 15 minutes? Or can you like, can you get a specific, hey, I had a problem yesterday at, you know, lunch hour. Can you get into like a specific time range there? So it doesn't do ranges. We are, we're extending that to actually have a better user interface than just a drop down, so that you can say, okay, give it more than 15, more than a, a single poll. Right now it's, it's every five minute period you can go back, but we're gonna, we're gonna improve the UI to say, okay, you can do that range. You can also do grouping to say, hey, I only wanna look at this group of devices. Like I only wanna see the headquarters site within this time frame, so that you're not looking at the entire site, the entire infrastructure. So back on the devices tab, um, there's a wealth of information under these sub tabs. You can see traffic levels, all of your PoE information, uh, how much power you uh, have available, how much you're using, uh, your layer two spanning tree information, topology change, uh, root bridge information, full inventory, manufacturer, model number, serial number. And by the way, again, you have all of this stuff that I've shown you. You have all of this within that first hour of deployment. And actually, I, I will... I will couch that and say, you'll have all of everything I'm showing you except for the map. This is what you, you build out for your own environment. Um, internal descriptions, you can see compile dates on devices. And as I previously mentioned, we do configuration management. So we'll backup configs on a set schedule. We'll also do a backup if somebody makes a change and we'll do a diff to show here's what that change was. And then we'll also have the ability to do large scale deployment changes. Like if you wanna put hundred lines of ACL out on the Cisco routers in the Chicago data center. What was the financials tab? I'd, like all the rest of them reading, like I could see where you're going here. What's- Yep, yep, yep. So financials, we looked at that and said, you know, having an understanding of what things cost and, and put your support costs into that and just do some math on that to say, here's what it costs to run your network. So you have, we automatically determine manufacture date off a lot of equipment. So you can see how old your stuff is. You can program in your deploy date, uh, put in your procurement cost, your amortization. And at the bottom right corner, it's an, and it gonna end up giving you your total on, here's how much it costs to run your network. I like that. Helps with justification. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the issues tab, this is everything that is broken in the environment. And again, the trick is if you knew what your equipment knew, you could proactively go through and fix all of these problems. We have NetFlow built in. So if you want to see who's taking bandwidth on an interface, you can highlight that and say, gee, who was taking this? And we support all the standard NetFlow, NetFlow V5, V9, IPFIX, SFlow, JFlow, all the different flavors. Uh, we have IPAM built in. All of the subnets automatically determined. You can click on a subnet and see how that subnet is laid out. We integrate with Microsoft DHCP, so all of your IPAM. I'm gonna finish off and just say we have server monitoring so we can see all of your servers. We do this very differently than other products. Once the server joins the domain, it's automatically monitored. Why wouldn't you? It's something you want to know about what's going on. So we're gonna automatically monitor CPU, memory, services, all of that stuff. You can monitor services. So anything you can ping, anything you don't wanna do a port check on. All of your clients, you can see where they're connected, what they are. And then the NetAlly integration. So we're gonna find all of the analyzers throughout the environment. You can inventory them, find where they're connected. You can click on an analyzer, see all the tests that are on that analyzer. And then for any one of these, click on the details, it's gonna jump right over to Link Live. Um, cloud service monitoring, any of the cloud services you want to see what the status is. We also have route tree visions uh, views into uh, how it's connected to those cloud services. And then the last thing is predictors. Because we have more data than other products, we can predict things. First predictor is a cabling predictor. It's going to predict where you have problems based upon the presence or absence of symbol errors. 
That means you can get ahead of your cabling and say, let's fix these problems before users complain about them. The bandwidth predictor looks at every interface in the infrastructure, finds out which ones are the most heavily utilized and which ones are trending towards 100% utilization the quickest. Then we give you a prediction date. That way you know how close you are to running out of a critical resource. 